गुड डे एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू दिज लेक्चर्स ऑन फिजिको केमिकल प्रोसेस फॉर वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर विल कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन ऑन द मेम्ब्रेन प्रोसेस विच आर यूज फॉर वाटर एंड वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट सो प्रीवियसली वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कसड अबाउट द मेम्ब्रेन प्रोसेस विच इंक्लूड अल्ट्रा फिल्ट्रेशन नैनो फिल्ट्रेशन माइक्रो फिल्ट्रेशन एंड रिवर्स आसमोसिस and we tried to learn regarding the different uh, ways in which these membranes are made how they are used further for water treatment we tried to learn the different equations and other theories which are used so in today's lecture we will try to solve one problem related to membrane processes and then further we will continue with the reverse osmosis so reverse osmosis is one of the techniques which is very very commonly used in the water and waste water treatment so we'll be emphasizing and understanding reverse osmosis more in detail from today's lecture onward but before that we will try to solve one numerical problem and through that we'll try to see that there are different ways in which uh, different design equations and other things can be used for solving also many a times we require some basic understanding of chemical engineering civil engineering etc et and those we can apply to solve our problem uh, so we'll continue with the first we'll start with one numerical and so in this numerical uh, it is given that an emerging pollutant uh, having one weight percent in the water is passed through a tubular Ultra filtration membrane module, which is having a two centimeter internal diameter, and it is two hundred centimeter long, and this this is being done at a temperature of twenty five degree centigrade. Now the rejection coefficient is point nine nine five. So we we are targeting that we will performing the calculation at rejection coefficient of point nine nine five. the applied pressure difference is 2 bar the diffusivity through the membrane pores is 9 into 10 raised to minus 11 meter square per second and viscosity of the solute is 4 cp gel point concentration of the solute at the membrane interface is 10.5% so we have to find out the flow velocity that has to be maintained in the tube in order to prevent formation of gel layer on the membrane surface so uh, this is being asked many times this the problem may be solved differently in actual scenario the data available in any problem where we have to solve the problem at any industry level or otherwise is very less and uh, so any problem can be uh, divided into three different sections so one section is that what amount of data is generally given by any industry okay so for which we are going to design the system so generally they will give is that okay this is the flow rate and this is the concentration so design a system for that so uh, this is the first data which is available now as a design engineer as a engineer our thing is that to take out other data so now the second data that will come into picture that okay what technique we are going to use so suppose we decide okay ultra filtration membrane so which module which we are going to use so this is our own decision so uh, we right now in this problem we are taking 2 cm internal diameter and 20 cm long so this is we have chosen it may be possible that this particular membrane not may not do, do the duty that is required so we may have to change this data second thing is that that once we decide okay this is the membrane module that we are going to use then we decide upon the operating parameters that we are going to work and under those condition whether we can achieve the targets also so many times we can assume some of the operating parameters then try to find out other parameters so this is possible in between we have to correctly no other parameters also like viscosity of solute so maybe the for that solute we have will have to check into the literature 
or we will have to actually evaluate the viscosity of the solute. So, it has been given here, but in the actual scenario these things we may have to determine differently. So, these are there, then some other parameters we assume. So, under those conditions and that is by experience. So, one data is given by the uh, industry, many other data we have to find out by our own ideas or by different instruments etcetera. Some of the parameters we assume and cross check that if that assumed parameter is correct, then whether the other parameters are also within the guidelines or not. So, uh, this is the way we try to solve. So, any problem can be always be broken into different sections for better understanding and this is how we should look into the problem. So, in this case we have to find out the flow velocity that has to be maintained in the tube to prevent the formation of gel layer on the membrane surface. So, uh, this is there. Now, here what we has been given is that the concentration of uh, concentration at the membrane surface at the incipient gelation is it is given again. So, uh, this is there and membrane water permeability also is reported. So, this is also uh, known to us. So, this is also maybe from the literature we have found out. Now, we start solving the problem. Now, the gel polarization model which has been given earlier which we discussed as per that the J w uh, is K c L n C g minus C p upon C b minus C p where K c is the mass transfer coefficient. Now, in this data what are the things that are known to us? So, concentration of the solute at the membrane it is already we have assumed to be 10.5 percent. So, here it will be 0 0.105. Now, the bulk solute concentration is 1 percent. So, it is 0 0.01. Now, the permeate concentration which is which we have to find out. Now, already it is given that 0.99.5 percent is the rejection. So, that means 1 minus 0.995 of the concentration will be rejected. So, based upon that we calculate and it is 0 0.00005. Now, if we apply this we are we are trying to find out the value within braces. So, that will be here and we solve it it is 10.6. Okay. Now, what we do is that uh, this was the limiting flux equation which was given J w is equal to earlier we had. Now, we little bit manipulate it. So, the exponential J w by k c will become equal to this and so and this is equal to this it itself. Okay. So, only and now we have already found it to be 10.6. So, if you solve it I will be finding that okay, J w by k c which is like flux divided by the mass transfer coefficient is 2.4. So, it is given that now another data which is given is that the at the membrane surface the concentration is 0 0.021 gram mole per liter. So, using this data the concentration difference between the feed and the permeate side will be this. So, C g is also known to us, C p is also known to us. So, we can find out this is the gram per mole per. So, now osmotic pressure which will be there for this concentration will be based upon this concentration difference. So, this is delta pi delta C R T and we find out to be 3.96 psi or 0.269 atmosphere, but the applied pressure difference is 2 bar. So, and which is equivalent to 29.39 psi. So, the actual driving force which is there is delta p minus delta pi which is osmotic pressure. So, it is 29.39 minus 3.95. So, we have 25.44 psi which is the uh, pressure driving force which is available to us. Okay. Based upon the assumption that the applied pressure difference is 2 bar. Now, under this condition, so uh, this is under this condition because the permeability is also given. So, we can find out after little bit correction. So, under this condition the water flux is 2.53 into 10 raise to minus 5 
meter cube per meter square per second. So, this calculation we can perform because already the permeability data is given here. So, this is known to us per unit PSI. So, this is there. So, we multiply by the available PSI to get the flux value. Now, once this once this flux value is known, okay, then we can find out the value of Kc because Jw by Kc is 2.4 that we have found earlier. So, from this data, we can solve and we can find out the Kc value which is 1.05 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter per second. So, this data we, we have found out. Now, once this data is known, we can further go ahead and find out the minimum liquid velocity. So, already these values are known to us from the data itself. We are assuming the solution density to be 1000 kg per meter cube uh, like because the concentration is very less. So, we are assuming the density to be of water only. The solute diffusivity value is also known already known from given in the problem. It may be determined uh, uh, differently also. So, it is given here in the problem. So, under that condition uh, if all these four parameters are known because tube diameter is also known, we can find out the speed number. So, uh, the speed number is given by nu by rho d and all the diffusivity value, density and viscosity every term is known to us. So, this value is found to be 4.44 into 10 raised to 4. Now, similarly we can find out the Sherwood number okay. and once Sherwood number is known we can find out the Reynolds number. So, Sherwood number is K c small d by capital D which is diffusivity and the small d the diameter is known to us. So, the Sherwood number has been found K c value has been found. Now, for mass transfer coefficient there is a relationship between Sherwood number, Reynolds number and Smith number. So, this is known. So, using this relationship we can find out the Reynolds number and once the Reynolds number is known, okay, we can find out the velocity also. So, Reynolds number is given by d v rho by nu and from that uh, we can find out the Reynolds number is already known to us. So, we can find out the velocity it is 3.42 meter per second. So, this is the minimum flow velocity that has to be maintained so that the wall mass transfer coefficient is always high enough for preventing any formation of gel layer on the membrane surface. So, uh, this we have to see so as to avoid the formation of gel layer and further fouling etcetera. So, uh, this is how we can perform the calculation. We can use the same tricks to find out other parameters also. So, this is like a iteration type of thing. We where one of parameters is assumed then the second parameter is known. So, based upon this we can perform different calculations etcetera. Certainly, we should know these correlations etcetera as well for finding out these parameters. So, a, we need to understand many other things for performing uh, various other calculations. Now, as uh, pointed earlier reverse osmosis is very very commonly used in the wastewater treatment and it is used in the industry as well as well as in the small water treatment units which are there which are installed in the households as well. So, what is reverse osmosis what is what are its detail now we are going to study the reverse osmosis thing more in detail. So, osmosis in general uh, and reverse osmosis is opposite of osmosis. So, let us first understand osmosis and then we will understand reverse osmosis. So, osmosis is defined as the spontaneous transport of a solvent uh, like for water and wastewater case the solvent is water from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution across a ideal semi permeable membrane uh, that uh, gives that impedes the passage of solute, but allows the solvent to flow. So, this will not allow the 
solute to move across the interface, but it will allow water to flow across the semi permeable membrane. So, under usual condition because of osmosis always a uh, spontaneous transport of solvent will occur. The system will reach equilibrium when the hydrostatic pressure on the saline water side balances the force uh, which is like osmotic pressure moving the water through the membrane. So, this osmotic pressure is noted. So, this is this is noted as osmotic pressure. So, in the actual condition what will happen is that we have fresh water, we have saline water and if we just keep them open the fresh water will always move across the saline water until unless we have condition where it will stop. So, equilibrium will be reached under that condition some amount of water will be again filled up up to this condition and we try to see what is this difference and from this difference we can find out the osmotic pressure which is there for this. So, this is called as osmotic pressure and because of this the fresh water will always go towards the saline water and try to dilute the concentration of this water. So, this is there. So, this is the osmotic pressure or osmosis. Now, if pressure is exerted to overcome the osmotic pressure, the solvent will flow from the saline side to the fresh water side and the semi permeable membrane which was earlier also that will not allow the passage of the molecules either other than water and gases. So, this uh, will be a reverse osmosis condition. So, therefore, reverse osmosis is a membrane based demineralization technique which is used to separate dissolved solids such as ions from solution. Most applications involve like water based solution. So, what we do is that we apply certain amount of pressure on this and once we start applying pressure on this the water starts moving from this side to this side. So, because of the pressure because this semi permeable membrane will only allow the water to move across its uh, across it. Now, because of that the saline concentration which is there it will become more concentrated ok because the water is going from this side. So, the amount of salt is still the same, but water is going to the fresh water side. So, that means this will become more concentrated and we later on we can remove this and thus we are getting clean water from saline water. So, this is called as reverse osmosis, but we have to apply very high amount of extra pressure to achieve this condition. So, this is the reverse osmosis. So, this is the how it is explained. So, osmosis is a natural phenomena which can be defined as the movement of pure water through a semi permeable membrane. The membrane is permeable to water and some ions, but rejects almost all the ions and dissolved. This process occurs until osmotic equilibrium is reached. In the chemical engineering terms, uh, when the chemical potential becomes equal on both sides of the membrane. Now, a difference of height is observed between both compartments when chemical potential is equalized. So, this difference in height is measured as the osmotic pressure which was given us here. Now, in the reverse osmosis uh, we apply pressure in addition to osmotic pressure. So, under that condition water is forced to flow from the concentrated to the dilute side and solutes are retained by the membrane on the concentrated sites itself. So, this is the way we have uh, we can treat the water or we can get pure water out of a concentrated slurry. So, this is there. Now, the driving force for diffusion in the osmotic pressure is typically described as a concentration gradient. So, a more uh, rigorous explanation can be given by understanding the chemical engineering thermodynamics ok. So, in the chemical engineering thermodynamics we know Gibbs energy. So, the general form of Gibbs function is given here and which is well known. So, delta G is equal to V delta P minus S delta T plus this potential term. 
so in this the new i is the chemical potential of solute i and the amount of solute i in the solution is, is given by n i so this is the other terms are volume pressure entropy etc now it is uh, known that the chemical potential which is new i is defined as the change in the gibbs energy resulting from a change in the amount of component i when the temperature and pressure are held constant so from here we can always define the uh, chemical potential also so this is given by delta g upon ni now therefore under constant temperature conditions so equilibrium will be achieved when this condition is met so this is there so under this this term is equal to zero okay and we want to see that delta g uh, equilibrium condition is reached so under equilibrium condition this term will be equal to zero so if we equate them so v delta p must be equal to this so this is now we can see now going further the pressure delta p which is required to balance the difference in chemical potential of a solute it is called as osmotic pressure and it is by convention generally it is written as pi okay so this is how we, it is found now the equation for osmotic pressure can be derived thermodynamically using assumptions of incompressible or ideal solution behavior also and under that condition it will be given by pi is equal to i psi crt where uh, this term is osmotic coefficient which is dimensionless c is the concentration of all solutes r is universal gas constant t is the temperature and i is the number of ions produced during dissociation of solute so through this we can find out the osmotic pressure also so this is there so uh, here some examples are given that number of ions per mole i would be 2 for nacl okay uh, this is there now the osmotic coefficient psi depends upon the nature of substance and its concentration for nacl like it ranges from 0.93 to 1.03 over a concentration range of 10 to 120 gram per liter of salt now sea water has an osmotic coefficient that varies from 0.85 to 0.95 for different concentration ranges so this is there now going further we will try to understand the flux so already we have defined that the flux for osmotic reverse osmosis case or for membrane processes it is always given as meter square meter cube per meter square per day where meter square is the membrane surface area okay for solutes it, it may be uh, given as kg per meter square per day or kg per day per meter square again meter square is the membrane surface area so in place of meter cube we are using kg in the case of solutes and there are different models which can be used like solution diffusion model pore flow model preferential sorption capacity flow models etc they can be used for understanding the flux or determining the flux so here they are described so solution diffusion model uh, at this uh, under this model it is assumed that the permeation will occur through a dense membrane where the active layer is permeable but it is essentially non porous okay it is allowing some amount of permeation but it is non porous water and solutes dissolve into the solid membrane material diffuse through the solid and re liquefy on the other side of the membrane separation occurs when the flux of the water is different from the flux of the solute itself so both the fluxes are different and because of that the separation is occurring so this is called solution diffusion model so this is there then there is a pore flow model so under this model it is assumed that the ro membranes have wide spaces pores through which the liquid water travels so it is assumed that the the membrane have wide spaces or pores through which the liquid water travels it considers the water and solute fluxes to be coupled 
and rejection occurs because the solute molecules are strained at the inter ends to the pore. So, this is as earlier also this assumption have been there in various models in the membrane processes. Because the solute and water molecules are similar in size, the rejection mechanism is not a physical saving, but rather a chemical effect such as electrostatic repulsion. Okay. So, this, this is also possible and, and this is also assumed. Then there is a third type of model, the major assumption this is model is called as preferential sorption capillary flow model and in this model again it is assumed that the membrane has pores. The separation occurs when one component of the feed solution either solute or water is preferentially adsorbed on the pore walls and is transported through the membrane by surface diffusion. So, it is adsorbed but surface diffusion occurs on the pore walls and because of that the separation is occurring. So, these are the different types of models which are there for reverse osmosis case. Now, these models express flux as the product of mass transfer coefficient and the driving force. So, under that condition if it is given the water flux will be given as J w is equal to K w delta p minus uh, delta pi. Now, this equation already we have used in the numerical that we have discussed. So, delta pi is the osmotic pressure and delta p is the actual pressure which has been applied. So, net transmembrane pressure which has been used and J w is the volumetric flux of the water and K w is the mass transfer coefficient for the water flux. So, this, this equation already we have used and so we have discussed it in the numericals itself. Then now the driving force uh, for the solute flux and this is true for the water flux. Now for the solute what is the condition? Now for the solute the flux is because of the concentration gradient. So, delta C is the concentration gradient and for, for solute the S term is being used and here we are using the mass transfer coefficient K s for solute flux. So, it is given. So, this is the solute flux. So, flux of solutes through the membrane can also be given here. So, J s is equal to C p into J w which is there. So, this way also we can uh, define. So, C p is the solute concentration in the permeate itself. So, through the membrane how the solute moves will be this and these are the equation which are there with respect to solute flux. Now, the recovery uh, is the for reverse osmosis case is the ratio of permeate flux to the feed water. So, this recovery is Q p upon Q f and the flow balance if we do is will be like this because we have feed water, we have permeate and we have concentrate which is there. So, with respect to overall flow rate that this will be the mass balance and with respect to a solute itself the mass balance will be this where C f is the concentration in the feed water, C p is the concentration in the permeate and C c is the concentration in the concentrate or reject water. So, this is there and through these balances we can find out uh, the concentration etcetera. Now, rejection is defined as R is equal to 1 minus C p upon C f. So, uh, this is there. So, like C p upon C f. So, we can find out the rejection also, recovery also and these are the mass balance equations. So, we can use these equations to solve many problems and understand the reverse osmosis in detail. So, further uh, things with respect to reverse osmosis and other things we will learn in the next lecture onwards and we will try to understand that uh, what are the different modules which are used, what are the characteristics which are required with respect to reverse osmosis for the whole system etcetera in the next lecture. Thank you very much.